So you're told by your doctor that you have something called PACs, or sometimes they call them APCs, atrial premature contractions, or premature atrial contractions, or you might have wore a Holter monitor that said you have a lot of PVCs, or VPCs, ventricular premature contractions, or premature ventricular contractions. They name them differently. Um, the APC, or the PAC, is the top chamber of your heart contracting early. And that's usually the chamber of your heart that starts the contraction process. You'll see, um, your normal heartbeat, like you got two beats in a row, then another beat, then another beat. And then you have one that comes a little bit early. It looks exactly the same as the ones you're having, but it comes a little early. That's how you can tell it's a PAC. Um, you see a P wave and then the, the PAC or your normal beat just coming way earlier than was expected. Um, those are called PACs and people can feel them. Um, the VPCs or PVCs uh, come from the ventricles, which are the bottom chambers. The atria are the top, the ventricles are the bottom. Um, it comes from the ventricles, and, and what happens is you, you'll see your normal beat. you got a normal beat and a normal beat, but then you see a really wide one that looks different because it fired from the bottom up. The PACs still fire from the top down, so they look normal. They look narrow, and they don't look abnormal compared to uh, uh, your other beats. All the beats look the same, just one of them's a little early. This one, your beats are all look the same, but then you got this really wide, very different looking beat. You know, normally they're like this, they're very narrow. you got this really wide uh, one that's no longer narrow, and it's coming from the bottom chambers and firing backwards. It, it can be early, it might not be early, it could be anywhere. Um, so it's not necessarily an early beat, um, but it can be, it just kind of depends on where it cycled. It's, def it's definitely early in that it shouldn't have happened, it should have waited for the signal from the top to come down, so in that sense it's early. Um, so what do you do about these? First of all, you need to wear a Holter monitor. You got to wear a monitor for two days or one day or whatever it is, or sometimes 30 days or a few weeks to find out how much are you having. Usually, if you're having less than 1% of all your beats or less than 2% of all your beats from these, we still have to investigate it, but they're not that dangerous. Um, once the number or the PVC burden gets higher, like we're in the 10 to 20% range, we probably should suppress it. Um, if they're over 20%, you could have a real problem because you have all these extra beats, they, they, you, they could eventually ultimately put you into heart failure. Um, so PACs are not as bad as PVCs usually. Um, PVCs come from the bottom chamber and we have to do more investigating if they're PVCs. Um, we have to make sure you don't have blocked arteries and the number one cause of PVCs or if you get a bunch of PVCs in a row it's called non-sustained VTAC or ventricular tachycardia but if you have a lot of these um, we have to make sure you don't have blocked arteries. The number one cause of PVCs is usually a blocked artery, so we'll order a stress test and, and an echogram. Uh, an ultrasound of your heart is an echogram. We just take pictures of your heart, kind of like a baby ultrasound, but not in your stomach up here in your chest area. Um, and we'll look for things. Sometimes you have a floppy valve that's triggering these, or a floppy leaflet of a valve, or people may have a valve that's really leaky and blood is backflowing in, in places that it shouldn't and is triggering these irregular rhythms. Um, so we have to make sure that uh, that, that your heart is structurally fine and that you don't have blocked arteries that may be triggering this because that would that would be you'd need a cardiac cath, you'd need something else. Now, the more risk factors for heart disease you have, like if you're a smoker, you're obese, you're older, you uh, have hypertension or kidney disease, the more, or cholesterol, the more risk factors you have, the more likely it is to be a blocked artery. If you're young and healthy, it's more likely something else. Um, and we have to investigate those too. Sometimes it could be something as simple as just anxiety. People have anxiety, they release catecholamines, something like adrenaline or epinephrine. They release too much catecholamines, which triggers these you know, heartbeats and flutters uh, to happen here and there. So uh, for the most part, if they're really low and you're otherwise healthy, it's not dangerous. Sometimes if they're encroaching on your life and you can't function, um, like you can't even work at, at work or you can't sleep at night and you just feel them all the time and you notice them all the time and you can't function, then we definitely probably have to put you on a medication to suppress them and you could talk to your cardiologist. There's all different kinds of things we can do. If it's not encroaching on your life and it's 1% or 2% or just something here and there, you notice every once in a while it's not really a big deal. A lot of times it's because of a stressor or something that happened and it'll kind of go away on its own. So we usually wait it out and recheck in a few months. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with all your friends.